Have you ever been DJing a party where somebody comes up to you and says, Oh my God, what is this you're playing? I love this. Happens to me a lot, and it doesn't usually happen to me during dance time. Welcome to Tuesday DJ Gig Tips on Friday the 13th, brought to you by Vibo, the music planning app. I saw a post that Rachel Lynch made in a DJ playlist group the other day where she was saying she doesn't understand how some people dislike requests from clients because you can still get creative with it. You can put them in an order they didn't expect. You can mix them in a way they didn't expect. And you know they're getting exactly what they want that way. And I agree. But I also look at music at events like Christmas gifts. Blanca can ask me for absolutely everything she wants for Christmas. She can tell me specifically what she wants. I can go out and buy it, wrap it up, and put it under the tree. How I wrap it, what box I put it in, what color paper I use, that could be kind of the, the surprise. I can get creative with how I do that. Now, she can ask me for all kinds of things, and I can't afford to get her everything on the list. So I've got to pick what gifts to get her. The only surprise is... What did I get her? What didn't I get her? This could actually be disappointing. She didn't get that thing she thought she was going to get. She got that other thing. I like it when she asks for maybe a few things that I can afford, but it also gives me room to get her something that she didn't ask for and she didn't expect. Maybe it's something she didn't even know about. She never heard of before, but she opens it and sees it and loves it. I know her. I know what she likes. And based on what she likes, I can make judgment calls on other things that I think she might like. That's my favorite type of gift to give because it's a complete surprise. When a client controls the whole evening of music, you don't have an opportunity to surprise them with anything. But having said that, I think there is a time, usually at most events, where you can give them things that they weren't expecting, your audience and your clients. Usually, sometimes. Sometimes the guest controls the entire evening, dinner and cocktail and everything. But in my experience, that's not the rule. It happens, but it doesn't always happen. So dinner and cocktail are conversation times and you're playing background music. Background music is when you can start having fun. And based on who's in front of you, you can play some really cool stuff that they never thought to ask for and maybe they've never even heard of. It's the time where you can get creative. I did this at the New Year's Eve gig I did. There was chill time, like for the first two hours. Dancing didn't kick off until 10. I actually started at 8. Could have started at 9, but I was there early and I started at 8. And I played all kinds of stuff that I knew nobody would dance to, but I thought they might like. And I was right because I got compliments. What kind of stuff was I doing? I did My Sharona by The Knack. I did Voyager by Daft Punk. I did Party by Van McCoy. I did Divinals I Touched Myself. I did all kinds of stuff. Stuff they knew, stuff they'd never heard of, that they enjoyed. And they would come up to me and say, man, this is really cool, I dig this. Bartenders were saying it, guests were saying it, waitresses were saying it. It was a really good feeling. And of course, when dancing started, it was incredibly predictable. It was all the stuff that everybody expected to hear. They were asking for it. I was playing it. All the hits, you know, the party songs. But it was that first two hours where I showed them who I was. And I was able to nail it. I was playing cool stuff. And it wasn't necessarily dance music. Some of it could have been music you could have danced to, but that wasn't the mood. The mood was chill. I'll also say that when I was a younger DJ, I felt like that when they weren't having cocktails or eating dinner, the main objective was to make them dance no matter what, make them dance. And later in the evening, if they kind of stopped dancing, I would turn the music up and play songs that I thought were bigger bangers. And I think that was the wrong thing to do because I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. If I really looked around and saw what was going on, I would have noticed that people were engaged in conversation. They were at the bar talking, they were at tables talking, they were still there. They just weren't dancing. They were doing another activity. They were being social. And being social is a big part of going to 
a club or going to a bar or going to a wedding, especially going to a wedding. People haven't seen each other for a long time. They need time to talk and catch up. You may see two families coming together that have never met before, and they're getting acquainted. That's a cool thing. You may see two people who haven't seen each other in 20 years who need to catch up and get acquainted. Play some background music that's up-tempo and fun. Maybe even some music that sparks conversation. Oh my gosh, do you remember this song? Oh, I haven't heard this in a long time. Those are my favorite times, I think. Yeah, the dance floor is always something that I could be proud of. If it goes really well, I can really feel like I've accomplished something. But there's something to be said for that ambient background music. And, and that, I think, is the time when we can get the most creative. And I've tried to have this conversation on my Dishecky News broadcast several times. But my colleagues on there tend to get sidetracked and we talk about something else always. So I thought I would have this conversation here on this channel where I could control the conversation a little better. Now, what you do during those let's call them other than dancing times is really up to you. You could be self-indulgent on it. Of course you can. You could also try to have empathy for who's in front of you and try to make judgment calls based on what you see, the age groups you see and the walks of life that you feel like you see play to them. I love turning them on to stuff they've never heard before. That, that is one of my favorite things to do and have them come up and say, wow, what is this? Or have them, you know, tell me later on, wow, that stuff you were playing earlier, oh my gosh, that was really good. I don't know what it was, but it was really good. My favorite stuff. I, I, I love that. The dance floor, like I said before, it's usually pretty predictable. We're all kind of playing the same stuff, right? It's the stuff they want to hear. But, yeah, those, those background music conversation times, that's your time to get creative. So that's my tip for this week. I hope it made sense to you. Questions, comments, let me know in the comments section. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.